بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So related to fasting, previously we talked about the the ruling about having relations while a person is fasting, and that the jamhur ulama say that if a person has sexual relations while they're fasting out of forgetfulness that they do not have to make up their Six fast no kafara yes this is jamhur imam ahmed said la and you know i lean as i said before in the previous sitting that i lean towards the statement of imam ahmed that even out of forgetfulness but it just goes to show us that there's ikhtilaf that if a person legitimately forgets that they're fasting okay. and they have relations with their spouse then in this situation jamhur ulama say that uh, that there's no kafara on the person yeah. that they, they it doesn't break their fast and they use evidence the general evidence from the hadith of the Prophet where he, okay. and the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says rabbana la la tu'akhidhna id nasina o akhtatna you know oh Allah do not hold us accountable if we forgot yeah. or we made a mistake yeah so using this evidence and other evidence a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they said it's general and that genera generality includes eating, drinking, and sexual relations. Yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. Jim is saying. Yeah, yeah. But Imam Ahmed differed with that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Well, but here's the hadith, uh, the Prophet sallallahu which relates to that, mashallah, min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Baynama nahnu julusun indu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ith ja'ahu rajulun faqal, Ya Rasulullah, halaktu, faqala ma ahlaka. O ma malaka, call wakatu ala imrati, wa ana saim, who firiwaya, a sub to ahli, fi ramadan, for call a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hal tajidu rukbatin, a rakabatin, tur tekuha, call a la, call a for hal tustati, and to som, shahrain mutatabiain, call a la, call a for hal tajid, it am sitina miskina, call a la. قال فسقط النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فبينما نحن على ذلك إذ أتي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعرق فيه تمر والعرق مكتل قال أين السائل قال أنا قال خذ هذا فتصدق به فقال أعلى أفقر مني يا رسول الله فوالله ما بين لابتيها يريد حرتين أهل البيت أفقر من أهل بيتي فضحك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى بدت إن إن ياب إن إن يابه ثم قال اتعم اتعمه أهلك رواه بخاري ومسلم من الحديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala and who narrated, he said that we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then a man came. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, I'm destroyed. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, And what destroyed you? Or what is with you? And the man said, I waqat ala imra'ati, meaning that I, this was a polite way of saying that I had relations with my family. And I was fasting. And then in another narration of the same hadith, it was reported that he said, I, I had relations with my family during Ramadan. Akramakum Allah. Then the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Do you have a slave to free? He said, No. He said, Do, Are you able to fast two months consecutive? He said, No. He said, Do you have food that you can feed 60 miskeen? He said, No. And then the Prophet ﷺ was silent. And then we were also watching this. And then the Prophet ﷺ came back with some dates in a type of container. And he said, where's the questioner? Where's the one who asked me the question? And the man, is, the man replied, he said, me. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, take from this and give charity. And then the man said, there is no one who is as poor 
as me and, and my family? Or uh, is there anyone as poor as me, O messenger of Allah? And he said, <laughs> and, there, and, and the prophet said, and then the man swore. He said, I swear by Allah that between the two mountains, these two mountains in Medina yeah. called Harratain, he said, there is no one, there is not a family which is more impoverished than my family. And the Prophet ﷺ laughed, alayhi salatu wasalam, until you could see his, uh, his, 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 yeah, his molar teeth or his, his, his side teeth. And then he said, feed your family with that. From this hadith is immense benefits that the ulama bring about. And there's, there's also some difference with the ulama, but we'll just, and this, this difference we talked about previously, that most of the ulama, they say in this situation, of course, because he had intentional relations, that he, it is obligation to make kafara, meaning that he has to do those expiations. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. either has to begin with freeing a slave yeah. if he is unable to do so fast two months consecutively if he's unable to do so he should feed 60 miskeen right. so this is uh, majority of those scholars say that it's an obligation for him to make kafara as long as he but where they differ is if he did it out of forgetfulness and this is what i i mentioned in a previous lecture and that if he he did it out of forgetfulness then uh jamhur say that he doesn't have to uh uh make uh, kafara and some of them say it's an obligation to make kafara but let's read just some of the benefits of this hadith without getting into depth about that ikhtilaf let me ask you a question did in the hadith did it mention whether if he did it out of forgetfulness or not Does no it, it like did, no it, it didn't it didn't mention that and and this is just one of the issues that the ulama brought from that one of the messiah and then the differences related to that issue whether it was for, whether forgetfulness or in, intentionally so it, it doesn't mention uh in the particular hadith regarding that but we'll see what uh some of the benefits he mentions he did it, huh? yeah so one of the things that sheikh ali basam rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned he said that that relations during the uh, of course during the day in ramadan is a type of fawahish that is a type of destruction and that's because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam agreed when the man said halakat you know that i'm destroyed so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and what destroyed you yeah. so since the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam agreed to that same language then it lets us know that this is this action during the month of ramadan is a type of destruction it's a type of major fawahish this is one of the things the ulama mentioned another uh, benefit from this is that the person who does it intentionally then it's an obligation that they have to do the kafara you know they have to make expiation and it is by the tartib according to the tartib as it's mentioned in the ayat that they have to first free a slave and if they can't find a slave then they should fast two months consecutively if they are unable to do that then they should feed uh, 60 miskeen Another benefit of this hadith is that this is a, a very big benefit the Sheikh mentioned is that that the expiation does not uh, is not forgotten or is not uh, you cannot cease to not make that expiation even if the person has difficulty even if they have a hardship because here and he said Li'an the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say that he doesn't have to do it but rather the prophet sallallahu he came with something to give the man to do the expi expiation so that's a big fire to let us know that the expiation does not escort you know it doesn't uh, disappear yeah. but it's even on the person who has difficulty they still have to when they're able to uh to 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 do feed one of those, those things to feed the miskin yeah. or, or what have you uh, another benefit of this hadith is that it's permissible for someone else to do that expiation yeah, yeah, on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, and that's a benefit yeah. from uh, we learn from this hadith. Another benefit from this hadith is that it is also permissible for the one who feeds those mus musakin for their own family to eat from that. Yeah. Yeah. 
but 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 can you it, feed your family? That's in the lahu akla minha where it's amaha ahlahu ma damat makhraja min ghairihi. All right, so he says as long as it's coming from other than him. So basically, you can feed your family with that if someone else is, if someone else is yeah, is paying you that. Yeah, if it's sadaka from someone else, or 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 you know, uh, uh, even on your behalf from someone else. But if it was your own, it appears to be that you can't. You know that you can't. For, they're not included in the sitin maskin because it's a wajib for you to pay for them and, and feed them anyway. So they wouldn't fall under those sitin maskin, and Allah subhanahu wa taala knows best. Another benefit is that is that Sheikh Ali Bassam uh, he says that the, the apparent meaning of this hadith is this hadith doesn't distinguish whether it's a Muslim slave or a non-Muslim slave as far as fr freeing them but the Hanafiya they distinguish between that and they say no uh, they, they make a distinction between that so I don't know maybe they make it to ayin that it has to be a, a Muslim slave that you freed and another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the beautiful manners of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that he, you know, was happy and pleased, and he laughed, and he, you know, you know, was very generous, and also paid that sadaqa on behalf of that man who had a difficult difficulty so it shows us the rahma and it shows us the husn al khulq you know the the beautiful manners of the prophet alayhi afdal salatu was salam and uh and so forth and another last benefit of this hadith is that is that the the person who has done a a big sin yeah. that is not mentioned in the sharia a punishment for it or anything then he comes with toba yeah. then in that situation then it is not for the imam to punish him yeah. in that situation meaning that the imam does not make ta'zir and does not make a special punishment for that for that uh, sin that which is not mentioned in the Sharia with a particular punishment, since it has no hud, and then the man has come up making toba from that, then leave him, leave him. Yeah. He made toba, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will accept his toba. And Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah brought a big faida, but we needed to prepare before getting into that and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam